race two is about to get underway here for the Super Cups and Jack Harden is taking first blood over Luke and put it on pole position. So I'm going to leave it up to Andy to run you through all of the action. Yeah, so that championship battle then between the two of them continues and Harding really needs to continue that form from race one, try and take some more points out of Herbert in this one if he can. That's your front row then with Aiden Hill's race one winner third because he had the third fastest, second fastest time in qualifying. Simon Baldwin alongside him. Joe Marshall Burks and Jack Sycamore share the third row ahead of Patrick Fletcher and Nick Rutter on row four. David Henderson and Chris Richardson are next, then Lewis Kent and Paul Myers with Bradley Kent on row seven alongside Gary Townsend, whilst Chris Dawkins and Will Stevenson did not set a time to so start from the back of the Super Cup grid. In Super Series, it's Pickford and Fleet on row number one. That was Pickford's first victory of the season. Simon Hutchings on the podium on his debut. He's third again with Holly alongside. Then Alex Miller, Adam Rowlandson, Jim Hart and David O'Reilly, whilst Liz Walton, Clive Powells and Declan Lee start at the back. Clive in particular, and Declan I suppose, two to watch for trying to move to the front because they both had front ring pace in race number one but had issues as they went along. <clears throat> So the green flag then waved at the back of the grid. Ten points now separate Harding and Herbert, but they're running out of races now in the championship. The red lights are on for the second time this weekend. At Donington Park, we're away in racing, and it's a good start made by Harding from the inside of row number one. He has his nose in front of Herbert slightly as they run into Redgate Corner, but it's much the same situation that we had at the start of yesterday's first race with Herbert, the only man braving the outside line, and he slots into second ahead of Hills in third round. The outside comes Lewis Kent, committed as ever there in the... Um, car usually driven by George Grant in this championship and he's having a weekend off meanwhile in the Super Series their race gets underway with an even start amongst most of the front runners are on board with Anthony Hutchings here he's in third position on the grid looking to try and capitalise on any mistakes from the top two but Pickford will hold the race lead and Simon Fleet is determined to hang on to second place and does so as they come out of Redgate Corner for the first time so down the crater curves they go then up through the gears for Hutchings so grid order then for the top three in the Super Series here, though, is your lead pack at the head of the field. And Luke Herbert, look, has got himself ahead of Jack Harding somewhere. So Luke Her Herbert now ahead of Harding with Hills in third and Simon Baldwin having survived the first quarter this time in fourth position. <coughs> field, though, for the time being, as you'd expect, very, very tightly bunched together. Out onto the exhibition straight they go. And Luke Herbert will be trying to make good his escape. That's probably not going to happen, though. And Jack Harding is adamant that that's not going to happen. He's weaving around in his mirrors already. This is a really, really hard position to be in for Jack Harding, trying to attack for the lead and defend his second place. We've heard time and time again this year, drivers saying that the race lead is by far and away the best place to be because that is uh, the easiest position to defend because you just back everyone up into each other. But Jack Harding's got his nose up the inside. He nuzzles up the inside of Luke Herbert. He's going for the race lead. And behind him, Aidan Hills nearly lost the third position there to uh, Simon Baldwin as well. They're all safely through the hairpin, but it looked as though Probably Herbert was going to be able to hang on to that lead there. We're on board now with Alex Miller, who in the Bora Motorsport number seven car is running in the middle of the uh, Super Series pack. Well, fourth place at the moment, actually. Hutchings there in front of us is still third. And Pickford still leads the Super Series race as they head out of the Melbourne uh, hairpin. Back up the hill once again. <coughs> Alex Miller, as I said, twice on the podium this year, but I had to make do with um, uh, not being on the podium. He was fifth place in race number one. Actually, is where he started for race number two as well. The race two grid for both classes based upon second fastest tyres from qualifying. So at the front, the top three started to get away again. Simon Baldwin is the cork in the bottle here, rather, as he tries to fend off Patrick Fletcher and Will Stevenson. Good to see Will Stevenson up at the sharp end again after a slightly lacklustre first race for Will, uh, where he didn't make it through the first lap and was out early doors. He survived the first lap this time, though. And he's running in sixth position at the moment, except he runs a bit wide and Jack Sycamore gets up the inside, takes that sixth place away as they go through McLean's corner. Up the hill then into Coppice. He will get a nice slipstream from that lot though. Then it's Joe Marshall Burke. So Joe Marshall Burke has also lost some ground. Having started sixth, he's down into eighth position halfway around the second lap. Leading three though, once again setting to it at the front of the field. Herbert with Harding defending his second place here from Aiden Hills. Aiden Hills race one winner looking to try and double up if he can. I think I'm writing saying that Aiden has not managed to win more than one race on any given weekend so far this season. Yeah, that is correct. So uh, he's never won more than one race so far this season, at least, in the same meeting. Oh, look at this behind Jack Sycamore at the inside. That was a lovely move from Sycamore from sixth to fourth, but it's rather, it's rather called chaos behind him because they're three abreast now. Simon Baldwin, Patrick Fletcher and Joe Marshall-Burks. 
cut this only knows what order they'll be in when they come out of the final corner, but that was very congested indeed down at what is a real pinch point, that Melbourne hairpin. So they're at the leading three, Sycamore fourth, Baldwin fifth. I think that's Fletcher still sixth, the head of Marshall Burke seventh by the looks of it. But we'll focus on the leaders for now because Luke Herbert is having to drive defensively here. No surprise there, I guess, to keep uh, Jack Harding behind. Three red gate, they go there, Sycamore. And then Simon Baldwin losing out now to Fletcher and possibly Marshall Burks as well. He tried that outside line at Redgate, but that always leaves you vulnerable to attack on the exit. He fends off Marshall Burks, but uh, Fletcher does go through. This group, though, getting longer and longer with every corner, it seems. We've got two, four, six, seven of them now, all the way back to David Henderson at the back of it. All squabbling for positions inside the top five for some of them. This is the fight for fourth position, remember. Sycamore having gone through now. They go, you're leading three then. <clears throat> Fight for fourth, about to appear. Look at the time they've lost already, but it's very entertaining stuff nonetheless. Through the right hander. Lewis Kent, I think, is the driver catching them now in the white car as well. They can make this an eight-way fight. We can see Lewis uh, stepping into the championship. Current championship contender in the TCR UK uh, title fight. And um, he is getting a bit of trap time here ahead of the final round of that championship at Donington Park in a few, few months' time. Oh, look at this side-by-side -side for the race lead there. Jack Harding going to the outside of Luke Herbert. Hills was looking to the inside. How's that one going to sort itself out? The fourth place battle stays vaguely single file as this heard into the chicane. But what is happening amongst the race leaders? Have we had a lead change? Has Harding got back through? No, he hasn't. But Aiden Hills has. Aiden Hills has played it perfectly and got the better exit from the chicane. But he runs too wide through the hairpin. And so Herbert goes back through on the inside. And they come out of the corner now in, I think, the same order as they were a couple of turns ago because it looks like Harding got back ahead of Hills for second place as well. Again, we'll see them when they come out of the Goddard's hairpin. Hopefully, we'll be able to pick it out. Well, Hills has actually held on, but he runs a bit wide on the exit of the final corner. Harding gets his nose back up the inside. Wheel to wheel there for second place. This is exactly what Luke Herbert wants to see in his mirrors because this is the only chance he has to maybe pull away from them and break the toe. That in itself is not going to be easy, though. Harding around the outside of Hills. Turns in, but can't quite close the door completely. Now he can, and he has gone through. So Harding into second place, Hills third, yellow flags at the greater curves though because somebody has gone off by the looks of it, not sure who that will be, not being notified that we've lost anyone at this stage so uh, we'll see if we can pick up on uh, the reason for that in a moment or two but uh, that means that the lead battle has to calm down slightly just for a second but they'll be back to it now, they're into a green flag zone up the hill, they're already catching up Paul Myers to put a lap on him so I wonder if he maybe was the culprit for that yellow flag. <clears throat> a bit of breathing space now though between Herbert the leader and then Harding and Hills fighting over second position. Will those two choose to work together I wonder or will they be that preoccupied fighting each other for second that they end up letting um, Herbert get away. They're going to catch Paul Myers right where they don't want to through the chicane so this is going to possibly hold up the race leader. Through they go, back out the other side. Myers stays well out of the way. Did that delay Herbert? Yes, it did, because Jack Harding's up the inside into the hairpin. And Jack Harding could be about to go back through into the race lead now. Fabulous racing between the three of them, as you would expect. And uh, Jack Harding goes through. Herbert gets the switch back, but that'll give him only the outside line for the final corner. And so Harding should be able to go back through. Meanwhile, in the Super Series element of the race, Matt Pickford still leading, fleet second. Third place looks to be still Hutchings, I think, is that. And then the rest of them filing in behind. Ball with Simon Hutchings. Yes, he is still in third place. And uh, we can see the leading two not that far in front of us still. Down into second gear through Goddard. This is quite a tricky left-hander. It's steeply downhill. The car wants to slide around quite a lot through there. Back out onto the pit straight again. And... Alex Miller looks to be the driver that's catching them, and Clive Powell. Now, Clive Powell, remember, started at the back of the grid. He's the one that's not quite part of this leading quartet, but he is lapping a little bit quicker than them. So Clive Powell's, who's already had three podium visits this year in the Super Series, could be about to maybe challenge for another, but he has to catch that group first. Only about halfway through the race, though. In fact, not even that. So he has got time to do this. Through Crane curves again. Pickford... Having a real run of form here at the moment then. Got his first win. That was his um, third podium appearance of the season. And uh, Matt Pitford looking good for another one here, you'd have to say. Hi, what's going to happen for the overall race lead, though, I wonder? Harding and Herbert almost trading paint there as they come down into the chicane. 
out the other side they go and the race leader just always has to head straight for that inside line into the hairpin at Melbourne to defend because it's such a prime opportunity for a dive bomb up the inside and that then bunches everyone up behind so Aidan Hills now sees a chance to get alongside Luke Herbert again but they'll have that outside line into Goddard's that's always the tricky thing with that little um, sequence of corners at the end of the lap you get the inside through one but that inevitably becomes the outside for the next corner so can be difficult sometimes to execute a move unless you can get to the inside line into either of the hairpins, which is what Simon Fleet was trying to do to Matt Pickford, but to no avail. Pickford, the number 16 car, stays in front. We can see here the battling in the Super Series is equally as close and equally as frenetic as it is at the front of the Super Cup pack. The only difference is these drivers are not racing for championship points. It is simply a series of races. And the only thing you can win essentially then is a trophy and the bragging rights in the pub later you can uh, the drivers do keep tally of who's got the most wins who's got the most podiums it's an unofficial championship of sorts then but uh, Pat Pickford uh, looking to try and take his second victory if he can in this one been uh, a solid top six or seven runner all year long but this is by far and away the strongest we've seen from him and, and in fairness the likes of Simon Fleet and Clyde Powell's often have been found to be in front of Pickford this year but Pickford has found something this weekend and looks every bit as strong as they do right down into the chicane come the leaders in Super Cup still Harding leading takes that defensive line into the chicane and that means on the exit Herbert is quicker and Herbert I think might have got to the inside line this time yes he has all oh, this contact between the two of them and Aidan Hills now gets the chance to come alongside them as well he could really benefit from this there is no love lost between Jack Harding and Luke Herbert we've seen that already this year and as the championship battle further intensifies that relationship isn't going to improve particularly uh, Herbert gets his way through but Harding just trying so hard there to close the door. There's been contact further back, though. Joe Marshall Burks and uh, Simon Goddard appear to have tangled. And Will Stevenson takes advantage of that to go past them. So, new race leader then, Luke Herbert back in front. Fastest lap in this race at the moment, by the way, has been sort of traded between these leaders, but it does look like it will be one of these three that will take the fastest lap, and that is worth those two valuable championship points. The old Simon Fleet's off. Simon Fleet from second place in Super Series. And looking at where he's pulled off there, just coming out of McLean's, I do think that he's pulled off rather than gone off, so to speak. So that looks like a mechanical issue, which is a, a rare thing for these Mark 3 MX-5s, but uh, that looks to be what's happened. So, Herbert then leading, but Harding was always going to have a little peek to the inside of the old hair. We saw him make a nice move there in race number one. Door was closed. The damage to the back of Herbert's car now. We've seen that before this year on the number one machine as well. That rear bumper tends to get a real work over whenever he's out in front. And someone, either Hills or Harding, you have to assume, has just given it a little love tap and detached it slightly. It will have a small effect on straight line speed, especially in such a high speed circuit as this one. That might just leave um, Herbert vulnerable to attack at the end of the long straights. This is one of them then. Out of coppice, Harding in the toe. Will Herbert choose to defend? He has no choice really. He can't give Harding the inside line, so Harding goes to the outside, back to the inside. That was a beautiful dummy if it works, but he can't quite get there. Uh, but locking up though, they're both on the absolute ragged edge now. Through the chicane they go, and then back down to the hairpin. Herbert hangs on though, and actually Harding is the one that's slow off the corner, so Hills gets up the inside, and this was not in the script for Jack Harding because he can't afford really to lose any points to Herbert at this stage of the year. But if things finish as they are now, he could lose at least four. He's going to try and fight back again though on the exit of Melbourne. This is giving Herbert the break again though. Aiden Hills doesn't really care about their championship battle. He's in it for himself and only himself. Mathematically still in contention, I suppose, for the championship is Aiden Hills, but it would take a real run of bad fortune for the other two, which so far hasn't really been what's happened. Their worst finishes are still inside the top five, both Luke Herbert and Jack Harding. They're rarely off the podium. And so Aiden Hills likely now to have to settle for third in the championship, so he can sort of just go for it here, fight for the race victories, fight for podiums show them that he does have the speed to compete with them and they're going into next year if these drivers all decide to stick around which we hope they do um, then uh, we may well see Aiden very much a championship contender in fact, I'm pretty sure we will do however having got in front of Jack Harding he's now going to try and keep him behind and they're side by side again into McLean's Harding to the outside line trying to get that better exit but Hills has good traction off the corner there and that's not always been the case this year we've seen Aiden struggling sometimes with rear grip on occasion 
Now that is Chris Dawkins, who was making a welcome return to the championship, but sadly off the road. Chris last raced with us back in uh, 2015, never had a podium. He did set the fastest lap at Cadwell Park that year, though, so he was a quick driver on his day, was Chris, but sadly this return to the Super Cup hasn't quite gone to plan. That looked like another engine that was expiring. Lead us then down the hill into the final third of this Hopping another enthralling second race of the weekend for the MX-5 Super Cup. And this finely poised championship battle looks as though it might be about to start turning back in the favour of Luke Herbert. Arrived here 12 points in front of Jack Harding. Things finish as they are now. He will take another four points out of him. So it'll go actually back out to 14 points, more than it was when we arrived here at the Midlands Circuit. This then is the fight for the lead of the Super Series. So um, Anthony, oh, sorry, Simon Hutchings, excuse me, has caught up to the back of Matt Pickford as Jack Harding goes for a real lunge up the inside of Aidan Hills. At Redgate Corner on the exit, Hills fights back though. And again, as they keep on dicing here, look at how much further away Luke Herbert is getting. Aiden Hills then trying his best here to prize his way back through. They're going to go side by side through the old the uh, crane of curves. Excuse me, this is always risky, but neither wants to back down. And Harding has gone back through into second position. Fantastic stuff from the AK Automotive driver. And uh, Jack Harding will not let Aiden Hills get the better of him here. He is absolutely determined of that. Up the hill through McLean's. Herbert getting away though now. Harding. So busy trying to defend this second place, which at all costs he must he must keep. He now must keep this second place. Now he's got it back. He can't let Hills go back through because he can almost afford to lose two points to her, but he can't really afford to lose any more than that because they are fast running out of races. Only two more rounds after this one. Three races at Silverstone in a few weeks' time, and then we're back here at Donington Park on the national circuit for the final rounds. So including this one, eight races to go. A maximum then of eight more opportunities for Jack Harding to try and outscore Luke Herbert. With every race that goes by, though, his chances of overhauling this 10 point deficit get smaller and smaller. 10 points doesn't sound like a lot, but there are only two points difference between each position on the track. And as I said, it's very rare for either of these two to be off the podium. So the very best you can hope for is to take maybe four points out of the other driver per race. And even then, they're so evenly matched that it's very rare we see them finish in the same order two races on the bounce. And we're seeing that again here, aren't we? Because Harding beat Herbert in the last race, and this time, Herbert seems to have the edge. So they are just so evenly matched. And that's what's made it such a fascinating season of racing. But uh, just that little bit more consistency for Herbert is what's given him the points lead. Harding's had more wins, six of them. But um, generally speaking, Herbert's had a higher rate of second place finishes than Harding those extra fastest lap points that's been enough to give him this uh, handy points lead going into the final few rounds of the year back in the super series where there's no stress and pressure of calculating championship points it's just good hard racing and uh, Simon Butchings just actually falling away slightly now for from uh, Matt Pickford the yellow machine you can see out in front takes a pretty tight line there through the second part of the crane of curves when he can afford to because you know behind him to fill that gap on the right hand side it's the old hairpin but Hutchings will be getting a, a whiff of a slipstream here if he can get any, another few car lengths closer he'll probably find that the last few car lengths would disappear pretty quickly now because the slipstream will tow him up to Matt Pickford's car can't quite get close enough for now down into the Melbourne hairpin again then Herbert Harding Hills first second and third as we've seen so many times this year and um is Luke Herbert going to take another race victory? His uh, fifth victory of the year this would be. If he finishes anywhere in the top three, though, Luke Herbert, it will be his 50th podium appearance. So that's a nice little uh, stat for him. He's only a lap away from that now as well. Barring disaster, a podium finish looks almost guaranteed. Jack Harding still has the most podiums of anyone in the history of the championship, but he'll only be two or three, I suppose, ahead of Luke Herbert. This will be his 53rd podium appearance, Jack Harding. And Aiden Hills, despite the fact that he's been racing in the championship for significantly less time than the other two, he's already racked up 18 podium finishes. So these are by far and away three of the most successful drivers in the history of the championship. The championship began all the way back in 2013 with just eight cars on the grid at the first race. And uh, now here we are a few late years later, admittedly not with the biggest grids we've ever seen in the Super Cup's history, but one of the most competitive ones for sure. And Jack Harding, all of a sudden look, 
has bridged that gap between Aiden Hills and Luke Herbert, and crucially, he's caught Herbert without bringing Hills with him, so he's actually got no real pressure here over the final half a lap or so. He might be able to have one more go at getting the lead away. I'm hunching because I don't think he's going to get close enough to Matt Pickford to do the same in the Super Series. This gap has been hovering around three quarters of a second or so for much of the second half of the race. Pickford seems to have this one more or less under control. We head up towards McLean's at the top of the circuit for the final time. The leaders, though, are side by side with two more corners to go. Herbert on the inside. Harding on the outside, he'll be trying to get this cut back on the exit of the corner, which he almost did on the first lap, he's going to do it again, is he? He gets up the inside, there's contact between the two of them. Oh, don't take each other out, boys, that is not what we need on the final lap of the race. Herbert hangs on, I don't think he was particularly pleased of that with uh, what happened there, but he comes out of the final corner, and it will be win number five of the season, podium number 50 in his Super Cup career for Luke Herbert, and he extends his championship lead over Jack Harding, who comes home in second position, the winning margin, and enormous. 0.37 of a second with Aiden Hills third, Patrick Fletcher fourth and Jack Sycamore in the top five again ahead of Will Stevenson, Simon Baldwin, Lewis Kent eighth and David Henderson and Nick Rutter. Gary Townsend is 11th, Bradley Kent 12th in the Super Cup with Chris Richardson 13th, Joe Marshall Burks and Chris Dawkins sadly both out of the race. In the Super Series, Pickford did hang on, although Hutchings got a bit closer there at the end, less than half a second in it. Alex Miller was on the podium again, then Clyde Powells and Christina Holly to round out the top five Super Series finishers. Simon Fleet, the only non-finisher from Super Series with that mechanical issue. Luke, you worked to get first place in this race. Talk us through it. Yeah, I mean, um, I started second, got a good start. Jack also got a, a similarly good start. Uh, but I managed to get the run on him down through Craners, uh, up the inside into Old Hairpin. Managed to break a gap a little bit. Um, Two-second gap, I think it was. I thought, oh, great, you know, I've, um, I've checked out. But then we come around to a back marker, unfortunately, you know, he's, he's driving his own pace, and so I just had to back off. You know, it's too, I didn't want to cause any damage to him or me, so um, so that gave uh, Aiden and Jack the chance to catch up so much that they just overtook me as I was going around the back marker. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Um, so, yeah, happy with that. I think Jack got the fastest lap, so we both got 100 points. So, championship fight still goes on. So, you know, it's, it's never ending in the, in the MX5 Super Cup. So, yeah, we'll see. You guys are definitely keeping us on that edge of our seat. I think you've planned this all along to wait till Silverstone to see who's going to be championship winner. So can't wait for the next round. Yeah, Silverstone's uh, an exciting one. It's um, anyone's race winning at Silverstone because you, you could be the slowest driver in the world, but if you're getting a tow, you know, you, you're getting sucked along. So, uh, yeah, Silverstone's an exciting one for us. Well, we can't wait. Congratulations again, and we'll see you in the final race this afternoon. Lovely. Thank you very much. That was one heck of a race, Jack. You guys are keeping us on our edge of our tours of what is happening. Yeah, I messed up on the break into turn one off the start. Um, let loop through on the inside, my own mistake. Um, and then I fought quite hard to get back into the lead. Um, it was due to a bit of help from a back marker, but I got into the lead um, and then messed it up again the lap after. Completely my fault. Um, so I was third, second, first, backwards and forwards. But um, yeah, we ended up coming through into second uh, with about three laps to go. I just had to get past Aiden. I was going to try and work with him, but he was just struggling with his car and I needed to try and get to Luke. So uh, I uh, got past Aiden and then left myself a little gap into the last corner to try and push for the fastest lap, which I managed to get. Um, so that I've equal the same points as Luke. Um, so it's just like getting a win. So uh, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Yeah, you guys are keeping us on our toes until Silverstone with this championship. Do you think it's going to go down to the bitter end? Yeah, you know, it, it might do. Um, I think I need a little bit more luck um, to make up the, the points on Luke. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough, but I'm just enjoying it for what it is. You know, it's just fun racing in it. That's what we come here for. That's what we like to hear. Well done, Jack, and congratulations again. Thank you. Aidan, that was a tough race, but I want to hear your version. It, yeah, it was a tough race, you're right. Um, similar to, to race one, I got in the lead, but this time I didn't manage to hold on to it. Um, my own fault, I led for about 100 yards and then locked up and went off. But yeah, it was a mad race. I can't even go through all the stuff that went on because it was just a classic race, you know, us three at the front and yeah, loads going on. But yeah, really enjoyed it. It just, I would like to have, you know, won the race. When you get into the lead and then and don't win the race, it's, it's frustrating because I made a mistake. But yeah, my goal this weekend was to have three podiums and at least one win. So we're nearly there. Perfect. Well, with the reverse grid this afternoon, do you think you'll still be on top pace? I hope so. It's always one of my favourite races, the reverse grid. A lot of action going on. Um, yeah, let's just see what happens. Let's have some fun. You're normally the person that pulls it round, so we can't wait to see you this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, we have won a lot of race threes, so <laughs> let's try and get one more.
Best of luck. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Well deserved. Second win of the weekend. Are you going to make it free out of three? We're going to give it a damn good go. Um, that one was a bit tougher than the first race. Uh, Simon Fleet kept me very honest early on in the race. I, I was quicker down the, the first complex, but he was catching me off the back. And I think a couple more laps and he might have had a good go. Uh, I think he had some mechanical issue because I was looking at him in and suddenly disappeared. Um, second to last lap, I got a black and white flag for track limits, so I was on two warnings. So I had to take the last lap super, super steady. Um, so that, that was kind of why my lap time dropped off. But yeah, we, we did it. So Brian, guys of BC Car Motorsport, done a great job with the car again. So yeah, let's see what we can do in race three. Fantastic. Well, we can't wait to see what you do with it. Thanks, Lindsay.